I'm going to take scrap metal engineering and I'm going to build a wheel balancer for this 18 inch disc. Hi, my name's Dale, and welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. You know, this is going to be a fun video. I want to show you how to make a wheel balancer. Now, if you watched part one and part two, I showed you how to turn down a disc and deal with harmonic balance problems. Now, we have to make sure that this thing's going to rotate smoothly at 1700 RPMs. And I don't have what you would call a wheel balancer because I don't have to do things like this very often. But with just some simple items that I already have in my shop, I'm going to show you how to make a wheel balancer. And it starts out with the components I have here. Things we're going to need, we're going to need a level, even though this one's a little shoddy looking, it'll still work well. I need some shim material. Here's some of our heroes right here, is some just drill rod. This here looks to be about quarter inch drill rod. Some tape, a large aluminum block, steel block, wood block, you'll see what I mean later, a clamp, and then the foundation are these aluminum rails. Now one thing about aluminum extrusions, they are flat. They're amazingly flat and will work great for what we're going to do here. And what we're going to do is we're going to extend this out, tape these rails down, get it all level, and then put the disc on it. So the aluminum block we're going to clamp down to the table now. This is wide enough to give me the set of rails clamped in between it so this fits, just barely. Now I'm not going to give you measurements on this stuff because this is kind of a scrap metal engineering project. Bring this out. We know we need to have, let's see, at least 18 inches. Now the reason I need that much is enough for the wheel to roll. So technically I only need 9 inches, but you have to have it roll. So we're going to clamp this aluminum block down. And it's going to become our foundation. So I'm bringing the block back just a little bit. And the reason I'm doing that is if I need to put some shims under here, I want to be able to do that fairly easily. And I don't want the block in the way. I also know that I want to have these two ends at the same distance because as I lift them up, if I lift them up equally, they'll rise equally. If one's back here and I lift it up in this one, the heights will be different. So we need one more clamp actually. Come in here with the level. Actually we're good on that one. That one's a little off. Oh, no, that one's off. So I'm going to put both shims under here. Now I'm going to have these up just a little bit because I think the weight of the wheel, yeah, it's going to press it down a bit. So we've got that set up. Now the magic is we're going to tape these down. And these are just quarter inch ground drill rod. They're not perfect, but they're going to be good enough. One of the things I've learned about static balance is it really matters on the size of the object you're balancing. This is a very large object, so it has the potential to overcome 
any of the flaws that are in these rods. If we were trying to balance a really small um, surface, let's say four inches, what I'm doing here probably wouldn't work. I'm not saying don't try it. I'm just saying that you may have to be a little more diligent, a little more careful to try to get it to work. I'm going to check one more thing here. Good. And let's see how the wheel works out. I have left this all set together just the way I had it on the lathe. And what we want to be aware of is that this is a tapered arbor, so it's going to be off a little bit, and we just have to be fine with that. So what I'm going to do is just let it set there, rotate a little bit, and see what happens. starting to show that we possibly have a heavy spot. A lot of you may think, well, this isn't working. So if we take, if we just take this little set screw here and screw it in here, you're going to see that just the little weight of that is going to throw it off balance. And we want to check it at different points. And what we end up doing is, if when this settles out, we'll mark it. And as I mark it, if I find a spot that's consistent, I know that that's a heavy, that's a heavy side. And you have the choice of either marking on the top, which would mean that's light, or mark it on the bottom, which is heavy. You have to go with what you're comfortable with. If this is not perfectly level, this will just keep rolling to one end, okay, or the other end. You always want to be with it. So you can see that we definitely are developing a heavy spot somewhere because it rolled up and now it's rolling back. And this is kind of like watching paint dry. So we know there's a series of holes right here that this has already been counterbalanced once. It stopped here. Probably at uh, 5 o'clock, stopped at 1 o'clock. And if it comes back up here, the balance point is probably right in between those two. So I'm going to set this right in the middle and just let go of these two lines and see where it starts to favor. You would think if you had a large aluminum disc like this, turn it down, it would automatically ba be balanced. Well, you have to remember that we have other things here. We have set screws. We have different length screws holding it together. Um, those all can cause the machine to be off balance. So that's what we're balancing for. We're not necessarily balancing the plate. We're balancing the whole system. So now the question is, how do we determine how much weight to take off? Well, what we're going to do is add weight to the light side. In this case, just a piece of tape. And let's see if that changes it. There we go. So now we know how much weight we have to take off. It's about this glob of tape. Now, I don't think that is going to affect the entire sanding machine. Because when I had it on the lathe, when it was out of balance, just sitting between the centers, it would fall to the heavy side. Well, when I took it, before I took it off the lathe and already had turned it down, I checked to see if I could find a heavy side, and I couldn't. So what I'm going to classify this as done. I think Whoa! Stop the video! I forgot to talk about one of the most important things about balancing the wheel, and that is actually removing the material on the wheel to help balance it because it's too heavy on one side. Remember how I used the tape to help locate where the wheel was actually too light? And I did it on the static balancer and I would still do this all on the static balance system that I built but I'd already taken apart 
and put it away before I forgot to add this to the video. So I'm just going to show it to you on the sander. It should be on the static balancer, so remember that. So we know where the tape is. Logic would say 180 degrees to the other side would actually be where it's heavy and we need to remove the material. So now what I would do is just take a quarter inch drill bit, drill in part of the way and test it back and forth. Now if you were really, how do I want to say, a stickler or really detailed, what you could do is get a beam scale, put the tape on one side, save the shavings as you drill the hole, put them on the other side and see how it balances out. Now for me I think that's a little overkill. I would just drill in and, and drill in a little bit further until I think I've removed enough material. Now this wheel was balanced once and you can see by this series of holes the person drilled all the way through. So if I were to drill in I wouldn't go all the way through because the sandpaper here is going to probably wear out quicker where these holes are than any other place on the disc. So I would just bring it through a little bit see how it does balance it out and then if I got in you know over half the way I would start drilling a little bit on each side of that and keep working it until I got it just right. Let's get back to the rest of the video. So what I'm going to classify this as done. I think it'll be close enough for this machine because I'm sure I will plug up sandpaper more on one side than the other. So where we're at I think we got a thumbs up. Now let's put it on the disc sander and see if I'm right. I bet you didn't expect that, did you? Um, I've built this disc sander so it can be moved around the shop. The base of it is a plow disc. The rest of it is just kind of pieces and parts. You know, again, it's that scrap metal engineering. It's what I had laying around. The only thing that would have been something I didn't make was the hub to the disc, but even that, there's an inner hub that I set up so it would fit onto this shaft. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to put the disc on and let's see what happens. Well, what do you think? Face shield? I think it's a good idea. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pump it on really quick. The biggest problem with the vibrations is when it was running slow. So let's find out. Well, I think that makes it a success. It's out about two, three thousandths. One thing is I didn't show you is I dropped this disc after all this work. Um, so there's a big dent in it here I'm going to have to file out. It may cause me some problems, but I doubt it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember there's three parts. There's part one where I took the gap out of the bed, fit the disc to it. Number two was setting up the back. Uh, trimming that down and getting rid of harmonic vibrations. And the third one, of course, is doing a static balance on this wheel. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me some thumbs up. Also, leave your positive, supportive comments and even your criticism done in a positive way. Until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm.